While the media distracts you with Taylor Swift's latest romance and false ambition of Nikki Haley as the Republican nominee, they're intentionally not telling you what's going on in the rest of the world. Currently, France has been casting arrows into the beast of globalism. French farmers have transformed their protests into something that's been as effective as it has been annoying to the ruling powers. Nearly 10,000 farmers used their tractors to blockade major road access across France last week. Two of France's largest farming unions warned that members from the regions around Paris would, quote, begin an indefinite siege of the capital. The government responded by deploying 15,000 police and military officers. 18 farmers were arrested for blocking traffic and 79 detained for trying to get inside Rungus, a market that supplies 60 percent of Paris's fresh food to nearly 12 million people. Interior Minister Gerald Darmanin has already warned that if farmers block Rungus, they would be crossing a red line. And if you think all of this escalated quickly, you'd be wrong. French farmers have been protesting for months. In fact, in December, farmers sprayed government buildings with manure. They also ripped down signposts and placed them upside down in the piles of manure that they placed across streets all around France. So why did this literal (laughs) hit the fan? Globalism, in short. You see, the European Union established a litany of new regulations, ones that negatively impacted farmers, not just in France, but across Europe. The Common Agricultural Policy, commonly referred to as CAP, has subsidized Europe's food security to the tune of 55 billion euros a year for the last six years. It focused on economy of scale, which meant bigger farms, bigger holdings, and common standards. As The Guardian summarized, quote, that is encouraged consolidation. The number of farms in the EU has fallen by more than a third since 2005, leaving many larger farms with high levels of debt in a low margin business and smaller ones increasingly uncompetitive. The European Union's new farm to fork strategy will only make things worse, though. Europe's Green Deal aims to make the bloc climate neutral by 2050. And since farming constitutes 11 percent of the EU's greenhouse gas emissions, farmers are roped into this initiative, whether they lack it or not. Farmers in France are a lot like conservatives here in the United States. They gripe that there are too many cumbersome regulations that are interpreted too strictly. Thus, adding more inane regulations will make compliance impossible. Some of the green targets that have been set include cutting pesticide use in half by 2030, cutting fertilizer use by 20 percent, preserving 4 percent of land to non-agricultural use, and increasing organic production to 25 percent of all EU farmland. Take an already consolidated farming market that is in debt and add in these tedious rules. Next, consider global pressures that have made things worse. The cost of living crisis has caused the base price farmers receive for produce to drop by nearly 9 percent, Since Russia's invasion, Ukraine has been allowed to flood the market with cheap produce in Central and Eastern Europe, sinking prices and destabilizing the competitive market. France, in particular, has been troubled with cheap imports from New Zealand and Chile, who are exempt from the new green rules that the French farmers have to follow. Finally, a trade deal between the EU and South America has farmers upset of even more unfair competition mainly in sugar, grain, and meat. These protests have forced the EU to concede two major points. First, limiting imports from Ukraine, and second, removing the rule that would force farmers to keep 4% of their land fallow. But these concessions are temporary and would just last through 2024. Protests have ricocheted across Europe. Dutch and Belgian farmers block roads, Polish farmers threaten to close the Ukraine border, and even Greece suffered road blockades. For now, it seems things are cooling off just a little bit. In addition to the EU's concessions, French Prime Minister Gabriel Attal made some of his own. He's agreed to not import products that use pesticides banned in the EU and has created new subsidies and tax breaks. So what's the point of me doing a mini deep dive on the French farming protest if it's winding down? For this reason, 
It may be over in France for now, but it's coming to the rest of the globe soon enough, especially the United States. Enter COP28, spelled out that refers to the 28th Conference of the Parties in regards the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Basically, a group of pseudo-intellectuals and government officials who think they know what's best for you and the environment. Think the World Economic Forum in Davos, but filled with only climate dorks. This group has conjured up a set of principles and targets called COP28, UAE Declaration on Sustainable Agriculture, Resilient Food Systems, and Climate Action. I know, that's a mouthful, but their goals are even harder to swallow. According to them, it, quote, stresses the need for common action on climate change, which adversely affects a large portion of the world's population, particularly those living in vulnerable countries and communities. Today signals a turning point embedding sustainable agriculture and food systems as critical components in both dealing with climate change and building food systems fit for the future. Together, we will deliver lasting change for families, farmers, and the future. Oh, great. A global Green New Deal. It's totalitarianism coded in altruism. Sure, things like common action and lasting change sound good, but who died and made them the arbiters of the environment? Like most things devised by the elite, it will hurt us and help them. I don't trust these clowns, and neither should you. Whether you believe in climate change or whether you think the United States should do something about it via legislation... That's all a political opinion. But I can guarantee you don't want to subscribe to this globalism, this new world order about the way the environment and farming should be. They will turn us and the whole world into France if they have their wish. And those farmers had to throw poop at government walls and block roads to get a little bit of a reprieve. The declaration I mentioned earlier has been endorsed by nearly 160 countries, including the United States. This agreement represents more than 5.7 billion people, 70% of the world's food, nearly 500 million farmers, and more than 75% of emissions from the global food system. Centralizing power is never a good idea, especially when it's on such a massive global scale. It's one thing to fling poop at a building in Washington, D.C. if I don't like climate rules. But where do I go fling my poop at a global mandate is the real question. Ready for the best part? The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation launched a $200 million partnership with the UAE to help implement this declaration. We all love our little Billy boy, the friendly dork eugenicist, don't we? So let's glue some pieces together. There's a global agreement that would upend farming as we know it. Bill Gates wants to help fund the initiative. Okay, so where does Billy get his capitalistic kicks from, though? I'm assuming his massive buy-up of farmland will somehow give him an advantage when it comes to realigning the food system here in the United States. You do know that Bill Gates owns nearly as much U.S. agriculture land as China, right? In fact, with nearly a quarter million acres, Billy is the largest private farmland owner in the U.S. Now, if you're paying attention, you might have noticed that China is getting in the game, too. The country owns about 384,000 acres of farmland here in the U.S. It's a mashup of individuals, companies, shareholders, and the CCP. Foreign ownership of agricultural land is not a novel concept. While foreign interest may buy land for simple reasons, like for investing, wind farming, or carbon offsets, there are nefarious reasons to worry about it. These include food system threats and espionage. And keep in mind that some of the land owned by foreign investors sits near military facilities here in the U.S. Now, the scariest part is we don't know exactly how much U.S. land is owned by foreign countries. The Government Accountability Office told the Daily Mail they are not reliably tracking data. Yeah, you heard that right. In fact, the Agricultural Foreign Investment Disclosure Act of 1978 is the only law that attempts to oversee the foreign transactions. And when it comes to states, it's even more of a crapshoot. Some states like Texas have no restrictions, while states like Missouri limit the amount of land that can be bought by foreign entities. But from the numbers that we do have, this is what we know. Between 2004 and 2014, 
foreign investors doubled the farmland they owned to more than 27 million acres. In 2019, they increased that to more than 35 million acres. That's about the size of Tennessee. Today, foreign investors own 40 million acres, which is about 3% of all U.S. farmland and is roughly the size of Iowa. Now, every state in the country has some of its land owned by foreign entities. But just like their motto, everything is bigger in Texas. They have the highest share of foreign-owned farmland, which is nearly 4.5 million acres. So let's recap. Bill Gates owns nearly a quarter million acres of farmland, while China owns more than 380,000 acres. Something tells me if China and Bill Gates are chasing U.S. farmland, then our food supply is under threat. Something is coming, something that will benefit them immensely. Never forget, COVID was brought to you by China and the vaccine by Bill Gates. Take these usual suspects and combine them with our incompetent leaders, and it doesn't paint a very pretty picture. Together, they covered your face with a mask, put a vaccine in your arm, closed down schools and businesses, and now they want to exert control over the global food supply. And who do you think will be waiting in the wings to control it here? You guessed it, Bill Gates. Our food supply is coveted by globalists. The French are feeling that now, along with the rest of Europe. We'll fill it soon enough. Will we roll over and take it like we did with the lockdowns, or will we fight back? That's a question you'll have to answer for yourself. Thanks for listening to Overnight Opinions. Be sure to tune in next Sunday night for an all-new episode. In the meantime, be sure to follow the Ladies Love Politics channel on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Variety on Social, True Social, X, BitChute, and Rumble.